Hey, hello friends and welcome to Retro Portal Studio and in this video we're going to be taking a look at implementing infinite scrolling in Flutter. What infinite scrolling means is that when we reach the bottom of the list, we make a request to load more content and as soon as we get the content, we append that to the end of the list and you can see that when we reach the bottom, we show a loading indicator and then we go to the bottom and if there is no more content, we show nothing more to load. This type of behavior is common in modern day applications and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the simplest approach to implement this. So let's get started. Okay, so right now I'm in a demo Flutter app in which I just have this my home page. And in the state of my home page, I have a few variables. I have a list of items that initially is set to an empty list. And I have two booleans called loading and all loaded. Loading will indicate that we're currently in process of loading new data. And all loaded will be set to true when there is no more data to be fetched. I also have this mock fetch function to replicate the behavior of an API. In this, the first thing that I do is I check the value of all loaded. And if this is true, I simply return because there is no more data to load. And if there is more data to load, I set the loading to true to indicate that we're going to make a request. And then we put a fake delay of 500 milliseconds just to mimic an actual API request. Then I create a new data for which I have written a bit of logic. I'll minimize the emulator and in this logic, I've set the limit of maximum items to 60. And if we have already received 60 or more items, we return an empty list or else we return a new list with next 20 elements. Now, once we get the new data, we check if this is empty. And if this is not empty, we add this to the list of items using the add all function of the list. Now we set the state again with the loading of false because new data has been loaded. And along with this, we also set the value of all loaded, which is equal to new data is empty because when the new data is empty, that means there is nothing more to return and hence all data has been loaded or else it will be set to false. Now I'll bring back the emulator. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to set the layout for this. I'll go down to the build function and in this, you can see that I'm returning a scaffold in the scaffold. I have a simple app bar with the title of infinite scrolling. And in the body of the scaffold, I'm returning a layout builder. I quite often use this layout builder as a parent because then I'm able to get the constraints in which I'm going to lay out the elements. In this case, I'm passing a builder function to the layout builder. And in the body of this function, I'm returning a container with a circular progress indicator in the center. Now we need to change this in order to display a list. We'll display the circular progress indicator only when the list is empty or else we'll display the list view. For this, I'll cut this container from here and I'll add a condition if the items is not empty. In this case, I'll return list view dot separated or else I'll return the circular progress indicator. Now for the item builder, I'll pass in a function that gives us the context and the index of the item in the list. In the body of this function, I'll return a list tile for which I'll pass in a title, which is going to be a text. And for the value of this text, I'm simply going to pass items and we'll pass in the index. Now for the separator builder, I'll pass in a function that will again give us the context and the index. And for the separator, I'll simply return divider. And for this divider, I'll set in the height of one. Now for the item count, I'll pass in items dot length. And just by doing this, we have a simple layout in which we'll display a circular progress indicator when there are no items in the list. And when the list is not empty, we show a list view by using the list view dot separated constructor. And in this, we pass in the item builder, which will create the items. And along with this, we pass in a separator builder to show a separation between two items. I'll reformat the code and I'll run the app once again. Even now you can see that there is nothing to display in the list. The reason for this is because we have not called the mock fetch function anywhere in our code. So the first time when we need to call this mock fetch function is when the state of this my home page is initialized. For this, I need to override the init state function. And just after super dot init state, I'll call the mock fetch function. Now, after just a split second of loading, we have 20 items in the list. Now that we are successfully displaying items in the list, we can start working on the infinite scrolling logic. For this, the first thing that we need to do is we need to detect when the list view reaches its bottom. And for this, we need to implement a scroll controller. To create a scroll controller, I'll go up in the state of my home page. And here, I'll create a new final of type scroll controller. 
I'll name this scroll controller and put this equal to its new instance. Now I'll go down to the list view and in this for the property of controller, I'll pass in the scroll controller. Now one thing you need to remember when you use a controller is that you need to dispose the controller in the dispose function of the stateful widget. So I'll implement the dispose function and in this after super.dispose, I'll write scroll controller.dispose. Now the reason for using a scroll controller is quite simple. The scroll controller, when passed as a controller to the list, keeps track of all the changes in the list. And we can listen to those changes using the add listener function of the scroll controller. And when we're listening to these changes, we can get some specific data from the scroll controller, which will tell us that the list view has reached its bottom. So for adding a listener to the scroll controller, I'll go to the init state function, and just after the mock fetch, I'll use scroll controller dot add listener. Now for this add listener, we need to pass in a function. And in the body of the function, we need to add a condition that will tell us that the list view has reached its bottom. So the condition is going to be if the scroll controller dot position dot pixels is greater than or equal to scroll controller dot position dot maximum scroll extent. I'll minimize the emulator. And if this condition is true, that means the list view has reached its bottom. And in this case, we need to call the mock fetch function to fetch the new data. Now, along with this condition, we also need to check that the previous mock fetch call is complete. And for this, we can simply pass in an and condition and give it a check of not loading. That means when the list view has reached its bottom and the loading of the previous request is complete, only in that case, we'll call the mock fetch function. Now let's discuss what's going on in this first condition. The max scroll extent indicates the maximum number of pixels that the list view can scroll through based on its content. And the value of pixels indicate the total value of pixels that the list view has to offset from its start to show the next content. And as you scroll through the list view, this pixels value gets larger and larger until it reaches this max scroll extent. So basically this condition means that when we have scrolled to reach the maximum scroll extent and the value of pixels reaches to the max scroll extent, we say that the list view has reached its bottom. Now I'll bring back the emulator and just before this mock fetch in the listener, I'll add a print statement and write a simple text of new data call. I'll open up the run window and I'll rerun the app. Now as I scroll to the list and reach the item number 19, it prints the new data call. That means we're fetching the new data and I can now scroll down the list and when we reach the item number 40, it prints the new data call again and we scroll down once more and this time it prints the new data call but now when we scroll down, you can see that there is no more call to mock fetch. That means we've reached the bottom of the list. I'll minimize the run window and remove this print statement and the next thing that we need to do is to show a loading indicator in the bottom of the screen to let the user know that the new data is loading. For this, I'll go down to the list view and I'll wrap this list view with a stack. Now, just after the list view, we need to add a positioned widget and give it the position parameters of left zero and bottom zero. And for the child, I'll give it a container. And for the container, I'll give it a height of 80 points. And for the child of this container, I'll add a center widget. And in the center, we'll have the circular progress indicator. I'll run the app once again. But at this point, you can see that the loading indicator is always on the screen. So we need to add a condition in the stack that if the loading is true, only in that case, we need to display the positioned widget. And also, this loading indicator is on the left-hand side because the size of the container is the size of the circular progress indicator. So we also need to pass in the width to this container and this is going to be constraints that is coming from the layout builder and we'll use the maximum width property of the constraints. I'll run the app once again and now you can see that the loading indicator is not being displayed. But when I scroll down the list and reach the item number 19, the loading indicator is displayed when the data is being loaded and when I move down, there is new data in the list. I can do that again and you can see that we have an infinite scrolling list. Now there is one more thing that we need to do. We need to display a text to tell the user that there is no more data to load. And we need to display this when the all loaded property is set to true. The way we're gonna show this text is by adding an extra item to the list view when the all loaded is set to true. For this, I'll go back to the list view. And in this, I'm giving the list view an item count property with the value of items.length. 
but to display an extra item in the list, I need to increment this value. For this, I'll add a condition and I'll start this with brackets. And if the all loaded property is true, in that case, I'm going to increment the length of items by one or else I'll pass zero and the item count will remain the same. Now in the item builder, we also need to make some changes because there is no item for the incremented index. For this, I can add an if else check to the item builder and we can simply check that if the index is less than items.length, in that case, we're going to display the list item or else we're going to return a container with a width of constraints.maximum width and a height of 50. And for the child of this container, I'm going to be using the center widget. And in the center, I'll display a text of nothing more to load. And at this point, when I scroll down the list, you can see the new items are being loaded. And when I reach the bottom of the list, there's a text of nothing more to load. And when I try to scroll beyond this, there's no more data to show. With this, we have an infinite scrolling list view that gives a seamless experience to the user and notifies the user when there's no more data to load. I hope you found this video useful. And if you do, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and also consider following me on Twitter for future updates. See you next time. Peace.